Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Good morning. I am believing that today will be a blessed day in your life and that you will experience a new beginning. And there'll be things today that will be unprecedented as a result of you making God priority and esteeming him and his relationship with you over everything else. You know, it's what God's opinion that really matters in our lives. It's what he determines concerning us. And the uh, identity that we have in him is what makes the opportunity for our lives to get better and better and better. And so, you know, we are so blessed because we get a chance to see things from a different perspective. We're not limited to the world's way. We're not limited to the natural realm. And as a result of our relationship with God, we can see things from heaven's point of view, from heaven's perspective. And as a result, it changes our perspective on many, many things. I was thinking about earlier today when my mother went home to be with the Lord and I was really having a hard time of, of uh, grief and loss and sorrow. But you know what? My husband mentioned to me and he said, you know, we've got to learn to see things from heaven's perspective. And so when I saw things uh, concerning her transition from heaven's perspective, it just changed my entire outlook on the fact that I knew that, of course, I would miss her. But at the same time, I realized that uh, the things that were going on in her body, the difficult times that she was having in pain and suffering and things of that nature, that um, she could transition on and get her heavenly body. And so a lot of times um, it's a matter of shifting our mindset, shifting our thinking and understanding God's point of view and seeing things from his lens, seeing and understanding that uh, we're not limited to the natural realm, but that we can also get a different outlook as a result of seeing it from God's point of view. So good morning from Newport News, Virginia, Sheila. Lucille from Augusta, Georgia, Joyce from Dayton, Ohio. And uh, so thankful for Jacqueline and let's see, Jean, Tia Walker. And, um, you know, we're really in expectation. We're in the finest time for the body of Christ. We're, um, I believe, in this final race, the final leg of the race. And I don't know about you, I want to make sure that I do my best and I give it all because I realize the importance of living a life that is fruitful, living well, loving well, and always being grateful and thankful for what we have. You know, thankfulness is the key. And we today have the opportunity to remember the goodness of God, remembering the things that he has done and that he will continue to do. And so uh, when we think on his goodness, it's always a good day. It's always an opportunity for God to intervene and get involved in our everyday affairs. And so I'm excited about today and looking forward to this opportunity for us to share um, in the things of God and share in God's word. So we're going to go ahead and um, get Psalms 91 equipped, and then we're going to 
make some confessions on favor so you can release the favor of God in your life. You can see um, his power go into effect because we realize that in our mouth has the power of life and death. And so we choose life this morning by releasing faith filled words and words that will change our circumstances and change our situations. And so let's say this together. Say, I declare that I dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I declare that I find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God rescues me from every trap and protects me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I'll not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I'll not dread any disease that stalks in darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil will befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven keep me from falling. I walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my diseases. He will deliver me from all of my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he rewards me with long life and he will show me his salvation. He will show me his salvation. Now, what we want to do is also release the word of God concerning the favor of God to operate in our lives. I believe that favor goes before us as a shield. I believe that the favor of God is already prearranged and made things ready for you for this day. The angels are ready to be dispensed on our behalf. Uh, we know that favor is uh, the fact that it is not anything that we earn or deserve, but we receive it by faith through grace as a result of what Jesus did. And so the favor of God is what we want to release at this time. Say this with me. I declare that today I experience unprecedented favor and unprecedented opportunities like never before. The favor of God positions me in the right place and at the right time. The favor of God gives me the advantage and new opportunities to prosper and to live in victory. The blessing of the Lord is upon me. It causes the favor of God to surround me as a shield. The favor of God on my life enables me to do what I cannot do on my own. It enables me to do supernatural things. I walk in God's favor. It is impossible for the enemy to prevent me from succeeding in the things that God has called me to do. I receive divine favor. I am sober 
and I rest my expectation fully in this divine favor. God's favor is sufficient for me. And when I am weak, his favor makes me strong. I am strong in the favor that is upon me. Multiply with peace. I am increasing with the divine favor and freedom from all fear. I believe that I receive the favor of God that is changing my circumstances to my benefit and empowering me to walk in grace. I declare that the favor of God is on me. It surrounds me. It goes before me and I have access to the throne of favor and in need of that favor that comes my way. The favor of God restores to me everything that the enemy has stolen, bringing me new and valuable real estate into my possession, causing me to experience victories in the midst of obstacles causing me to be appreciated and recognized by my superiors. I receive prominence and preferential treatment all the days of my life. It produces supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, recognition, prominence, preferential treatment, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won that I don't even have to fight because God is establishing me and I walk in the light of his favor that is upon my ways. I receive the advantage. I receive the assistance the support, the leverage, honor, benefits, endorsements, special attention, backing, respect, priority, privilege, promotion, upgrade, consideration, and goodwill. Great things are happening for me now that have never happened to me before. And I thank you, Lord, that it is unparalleled, new and beyond anything that I've experienced before. Great things are happening. And I expect groundbreaking, extraordinary, phenomenal, record setting and revolutionary and I thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon me, causing me to enlarge my territory in Jesus' name. Woo, that was a lot. I know it was a lot, but you know what? We've got to fill ourselves up with the word and release the word of God. And once we release the word of God, you have every right to be in expectation because our words have the power to change everything, to turn things around, things that the enemy was trying to do and traps that perhaps he was trying to arrange. How I many you know it's been turned upside down because our mouth and our words have been released upon our circumstances and upon our situations. So I wanna encourage you today to just stay in expectation when you bump into the favor of God, when you see things that you know it wasn't anything but the favor of God, just begin to remember that it's God's goodness and that it is him showering you and causing you to experience his divine uh, grace and his divine uh, treatment. And, you know, I wanted to share um, that happened to me a couple years ago, I had gone Christmas shopping and 
I had purchased a um, gift for my mother and I had gone into this one store and um, the store was crowded. It was a lot of people in there. We were in there packed, 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 packed. I mean, shoulder to shoulder. It was a jewelry store. And I realized that when I got to got up to leave and prepared to leave, that my bag was gone. And the bag that I had was the bag that had my mother's gift in it. And I was so disappointed, so heartbroken. I looked everywhere. I looked around on the floor. I looked on the counter, um, asked the store clerk if she had seen a bag or um, just really, you know, backtracking and everything, just trying to figure out where it was or what I had done. I was trying to recall in my mind. And um, unfortunately, they weren't any help. They said, ma'am, no, we're uh, don't see anything. We don't have anything. And, um, of course, if something, uh, comes up, we'll be sure to notify you. I left them my contact information. I reached out to the mall security because I was curious if someone had maybe, you know, notified them or they had gotten a recent call and they said, no, we haven't heard about anything. And they said, ma'am, you know, it's Christmas time. So, I mean, there's so much going on and we, you know, aren't able to really provide any other assistance at this time. So I just prayed on it and I said, Lord, you know, this is so important to me. This is um, a special gift, something that I've really put a lot of thought and time into that I want to give as a gift uh, to my mother. And it's her birthstone and all these things that um, I was super excited about. And um, I just presented it before God and left it there. And um, I just trusted God that he would cause something supernatural to happen, some favor to maybe take place. And um, lo and behold, I got a call from the store and the bag had been dropped back off. And the individual who had taken it said they took it by mistake when they were gathering up all of their bags and they took my bag with their bags. And they didn't realize that they had taken my bag until they had gotten home. And so they immediately um, recognized it and brought it back to the store. And so I was so thankful. And, you know, that's something that's small. But God is concerned about, he says, even the hairs of our heads, the details of our life. And when we release the favor of God on things that we've lost, things that maybe the enemy has stolen, um, God is a God of restoration. So I don't know what you may have lost today or what you're believing to be restored, but he is a restorer. And it takes us trusting him and being in expectation and allowing him to get involved and to intervene in our affairs. There are a couple of things that Job even experienced as related to supernatural restoration. The message translation in Job 42 says, God blessed Job's life. Job, God blessed Job's latter life even more than his earlier life. He ended up with 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And so, you know, it doesn't matter what stage of life you're in. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, the ladder of your life, like it was in Job's life. Maybe you're starting over with a new career, reinventing yourself or starting a new business as a result of the pandemic. I'm telling you, God will restore. He is a restorer. And the favor of God will cause things to come back, not just as they were, but they will come back better and um, come back with more in multiplication. It also says that he also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first daughter Dove, the second Cinnamon, 
and the third dark eyes. These are some names. There was not a woman in the country as beautiful as Job's daughters. Their father treated them as equals with their brothers, providing the same inheritance. And this is verses 12 through 17. And so Job's life was even restored with his children. And I believe there's supernatural restoration that is available even with our family and with our children. And then it says, uh, in the message translation, that Job lived another 140 years, living to see his children and grandchildren, four generations of them. And so I challenge you today to believe God for supernatural restoration, supernatural restoration of anything that you're believing for God to return back to not just how it was, but better than was in the beginning, better than what it was, because God is able to do that. He can cause supernatural restoration, supernatural acceleration. We see this in Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. It says, 24 hours, they experience supernatural acceleration. And so there may be things that you are embarking on. You know, there's this new normal, this next normal that we're in as a result of post pandemic and coming out of this pandemic. And I'm just believing that it'll be a supernatural acceleration, an anointing of quick understanding. Uh, we see technology like never before. We see things that are happening at such a speed. And I believe that God will cause things to happen in our lives. And then we will be able to testify that this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. And um, we see supernatural acceleration even with the famine. It says the famine was over 24 hours later and there was plenty for all. And so there's supernatural multiplication that is available today that God can get on uh, our financial affairs. God can cause multiplication in uh, areas of our life, the things that we're in need of, there's supernatural provision. And so we are not limited today. Um, we're not limited. We're not stranded. We have the power of change on the inside of us. When you receive Jesus, that power that is on the inside of us gives us the opportunity to walk in uh, and to progress, to accelerate, to change, to multiply, to get better. Um, it's just like that butterfly that undergoes the process of transformation and the metamorphosis. It starts off as a caterpillar, but you know, over time, that thing begins to grow and take off, has wings, it has the ability to fly. And so it is in our lives when the power of God gets uh, released on our situations and God breathes in our life and breathes on our relationship with him and breathes on our affairs because we invite him in. I'm telling you, things will be able to take on a new life, a new level, unlike what we've ever experienced before. And so I'm just believing that today will be a day where you will experience that. And so I just want you to know that uh, today is the day and we awake to God's grace, to believing in this power to change our lives because we know that we are the love by him, knowing that we are the redeemed, the cherished, the beloved, the adored, the peculiar people, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, all these things. We believe his love for us today. We believe um, the fact that he wants to prosper his children and he wants us to 
walk in his goodness and experience the blessed life. And it begins by us believing who we are and believing in his love. So believe his kindness today, that kindness that will cause um, situations and circumstances to change. And so I encourage you to just be an expectation, be an expectation for that favor to go before you. And I believe that as a result of that favor going before you, you'll be able to testify and you'll be able to acknowledge that this was God's doing. And it is marvelous. It is marvelous in our eyes. And we can encourage one another. We'll be able to share with one another. And we'll be able to know without any shadow of a doubt. And we can give God the credit for what he has done. And, you know, we'll be able to testify that we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So God bless you. I pray that you're encouraged, that you're expecting something good and you're believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you. We love you. God bless. Bye-bye.